from as early as 1960, when Nigeria gained her independence from Britain, there has been a reciprocal distrust among the three ethnic groups, that is, the Hausas of the Northern Region, the Yorubas of the Western Region, and the Igbos of the Eastern Region. This shared skepticism among the three tribes can be said to be the only thing they shared in common since the amalgamation of Nigeria in 1914. Over time, this distrust has manifested in the politics and governing of the country and ultimately led to a bloody civil war that lasted almost three years, resulting in the death of millions of Nigerians from all divides and destruction of lives and properties that would be difficult to quantify. But in order to get a better understanding of the origins of this shared animosity, we have to do a deep dive into the very beginning of the creation of the entity called Nigeria. For this, I'll be quoting from Alexander Madiebo's 1980 publication, the Nigerian Revolution and the Biafran War. The Federation of Nigeria, as it exists today, has never really been one homogeneous country, for it is widely differing people and tribes are yet to find any basis for true unity. This unfortunate yet obvious fact notwithstanding, the former colonial master had to keep the country one in order to effectively control his vital economic interests concentrated mainly in the more advanced and political unreliable South. Thus, for administration convenience, Northern and Southern Nigeria became amalgamated in 1914. Thereafter, the only thing these people had in common became the name of their country. That alone was an insufficient basis for true unity. Under normal circumstances, the amalgamation ought to have brought the various people closer together and provided a firm basis for the other task of establishing closer cultural, social, religious and linguistic ties among the people ties which are vital for true unity. The prevailing circumstances were far from normal. For the colonial masters, such a union, if allowed to develop, would have amounted to a major threat to the very economic interest he is striving to protect. It was to remove this unwelcome threat that the Britain introduced the divide and rule system of government for the country. The important aspect of this system is that it laid emphasis on the differences among the peoples, while encouraging social apathy. As a result, there was a division, hatred, unhealthy rivalry, and pronounced disparity in development among the various people of the country. The ultimate result of this situation was that the possibilities of a coordinated national resistance against foreign domination were reduced, if not completely removed. All the same, social integration among the various Nigerian people was taking place to a commendable extent all over the country. However, this integration proceeded faster in the south than in the north, which always saw an uncontrolled integration of tribes as a threat to its religion, culture, and customs. Thus, we find that in all northern Nigerian cities and towns, the northern indigents lived in the cities while the southern strangers occupied the Sabongiri or strangers' quarter. This system made the problem of identification of strangers easy whenever there was a need to locate them. Indeed, some expatriates who were often more Nigerian than the Nigerians did their utmost to encourage the separation both in civilian life and in the army. Soon, top political leaders in the path of the country began to speak on television and radio to condemn and vilify Nigerian strangers in their midst in an attempt to emphasize the need for separate existence and their determination to ensure its realization. The colonial master determined to ensure a continued uninterrupted economic exploitation of the country even after independence recognized that this could only be done not by keeping the country one but by ensuring that the effective political and military powers were left in the hands of that part of the country they could trust. The military power being necessary to ensure a stable government of such a big country as Nigeria made up as it is of diverse and heterogeneous elements. At independence, therefore, Nigeria became a federation and thus remained one country. Soon afterwards, the battle to consolidate the legacy of political and military dominance of a section of Nigeria over the rest of the federation began with increased intensity. It is this struggle that eventually degenerated into coup d'etats and a bloody civil war. A lot of political intrigues and maneuvering dominated the First Republic 
that had Sir Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, a Hausa as Prime Minister, Namdi Azikiwe and Igbo as Governor General and later President of Nigeria, and Chief Obafemi Awolowo, a Yoruba, as Leader of the Opposition in the Federal Parliament. But all that was to change forever when the first military coup of January 15, 1966, led by Major Kadnan Zeogu, opened the Pandora's box and led to a series of more coups and counter coups over the next 30 years. I have created a detailed series, My Fellow Nigerians, that chronicles all the coup d'etats in Nigeria since 1966. So if you haven't already watched it, I highly recommend that you watch it. You can find the link in the description. By 1967, the country faced one of its darkest times in a bloody civil war that lasted two years, six months, one week and two days, resulting in the death of millions of Nigerians. The Igbos of eastern regions suffered a greater number of casualties in the war because of the agitation for their own sovereign state of Biafra. Even though the military government of General Yakub Gowon attempted to unify the country with his famous No Victor No Vanquish declaration, the scars of wars have remained etched in the minds of many Nigerians. By 1999, when President Olushagen Obasanjo created the Human Rights Violation Investigation Commission, the Igbos, led by Ohane Zendi Igbo, petitioned the Nigerian government for war crimes committed against them during the Civil War. They have demanded for 8 trillion naira, among other things, as reparation for the Civil War. In this next historic series of proceedings, Ohane Zendi Igbo, the apex Igbo social cultural organization in the country, go head to head with Ariwa Consultative Forum, the social and political organization of Northern leaders in an epic but civil proceedings that lasted for months. While it's understandable that this topic may invoke sentiments, I appeal to you to please keep your comments civil. And if you enjoy our content, go ahead and drop us a comment. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next video. No, professor, it's all right, it's all right. Let's make progress. We know you are here. <laughs> yes, call the witness you want to cross-examine. Appearances. May please, my lord, and uh, commissioners, I appear for the petitioner. With me are Chief Anthony Mobo, S A N, Chief Enechi. Onya, S A N, Nana Ewa Esquire, Chief E N C Emekoba. And uh, Godfrey Ewa are with me for the petitioner. With respect, my Lord and honorable members of the commission, Yahya Mahmoud is my name. I appear for Ariwa Consultative Forum. Appearing with me are my learned friends, Professor Awali Adudu. Inu Abdul Qadir Esquire and Mohammed Abdul Hamid Esquire. My Lord, may I announce appearance for the following three persons. One, Alhaji Shehu Usman Ali Ushagari. Two, Alhaji Maitama Sule. <coughs> And thirdly, Alhaji Inuawada. My name is JK Gazama SAN, and I have with me the following colleagues 
Adamu Ajuji Waziri Esquire, IBM Haruna Esquire, R.O. Yusuf Esquire, and lastly, but not the least, N. Wathanafa, Miss. Uh, with the profoundest respect, my lord, my name is M.B. Wiley Esquire, so refreshingly. Um, I appear for General Yakubu Gawan and Al Haji Megali Diko Yusuf. Uh, with me is Musa Abdu Esquire and Buba Aliu Esquire. With all due humility, my Lord and other honorable members of the Commission, my name is Sebastian Hon Esquire. Appearing with me now, Nankin Bagudu Esquire, John Chishi Esquire, Teve Ayuajo. Ayuajo is A U A Y U A hyphen J O R Esquire and DYN Mayugari for the Joint Action Committee on the Middle Belt. May it please your Lordship and the respected commissioners, I announce my appearance for the Honorable Commission. My name is Mrs. Chinwe Owandu. With me is Mr. Emmanuel Akaka. May you please May you please, my Lord, the Chairman and Honorable Members of this Commission, Aru N. Godwin Square, Assistant Director of Civil Litigation, River State Minister of Justice for the River State Government, my Lord. May you please, my Lord and honorable members of the commission, Geoffrey Yu Oputa, Farmer Kids and Development Union. With due respect, my lord, I am of an I wicked. I appear for the commission of police calm state. Mr. Bully. May it please my Lord and members of the Commission. I am Swaj Saida, Director of Public Prosecution, Kano State Minister of Justice. I am Public Attorney General of Kano State. My Lord, we want to put uh, the last witness in the witness box for re-examination. Re Wasn't he re-examined before we rose last time? No, we didn't. I see. Sorry. He was not? No, he was not. I see. Put him back then. Yes. Yes. Sorry, you hold on. Will you hold on a bit? Yes, uh, the last witness was uh, Uche Chukumerije. What witness was he? Registrar. What witness was he? He was recalled for cross examination. By the counsel, what ACF. witness was he? Second witness, third witness. First witness. First witness. Yes. Is he here?
Sugar Hill. Either remind him he's still on his oath or re-swear him, whichever is easier. My Lord, my learned, uh, uh, my learned brother, Silk, in nature, I will uh, re-examine it. Learned brother? When did you become a brother? <laughs> he's, he's my learned brother, Silk. Well, no, no, brother. I think that is the proper designation. No. I see, brother Silk. Brother Silk, yes. I don't know about brother Silk. That is <laughs> deliberate. I didn't say learned brother. He's not a brother like a judge or anything, but he's a learned brother, Silk. He's a, he's a senior advocate. And uh, very noted. Maybe the. <coughs> Witness, tell the commission your names. For examination. Re-examination. We, so we, we know his name. All right. <laughs> you are re-examining. So, all right, then, if you know. Uh, comrade, before you... Have you seen XB40? Let me show him. Yes. Nah. Ex okay. 40 was tendered after you have given evidence in chief at Enugu. Yes. You had no opportunity of reacting to Ex 40 before now. Yes, no, no. Good. You have prepared your reaction in writing. Yes. Where is it? To shorten the time. The reaction was prepared by a team of Ohaneze, not I alone. Hmm? Is it your reaction to the Arewa memorandum? Yes, my lord. My lord, I beg to think that for time purposes. Registrar, what is the last exhibit? Last exhibit is what? Registrar. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, my lord. Five three. I'm sorry, my lord. We are not, strictly speaking, objecting to the document. But what we are saying is, my lord, we saw the purpose of re-examination is to clear ambiguities arising from cross-examination, not to tender new evidence or to tender response from a witness who has given evidence and has been cross-examined. We know anything goes before the commission, but we should do the right thing. Thank you, my lord. Yes, exhibit what is this? 5-4. Five, four, four. 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 I brought a book on cross and re-examination, it's here with me. And when we say in cross-examination, we we'll ask so, 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 what is your reaction? It's re-examination. Definitely. Yes. Now, you told uh, the commission that Port Harcourt was part of Oweri province earlier. Yes. No, no, no. In re-examination, you always say, you were asked in cross-examination, so, 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 so. You're then right. you re-examine. That's what I mean, sir. But you said you told the commission. All when? Right. You were in cross-examination, to use the language, sir. 
you were asked the question where Portacot was, and you said it was part, sometime part of Oweri province. Yes. Have you any document to show it from the archives? Yes. Yes. Show him the map. My Lord, uh, Subject to the better records of this Honorable Commission, which is to be preferred to our own records, I recall that at no point under cross-examination did I raise the question as to whether Port Harcourt was part of Oweri province or any other province. And to that extent, first, that question coming under re-examination was unnecessary because it seeks to clarify nothing. Two, this map being sought to tender now cannot be used to make clarification of anything that is not in doubt. So I see both the question and the map being sought to be tendered in support of it as thoroughly unnecessary and a further waste of the time of this commission because that is not in doubt. The history of Port Harcourt, which part of province it was before, whether it was part of a protectorate or colony, is not what this commission is after. This address is not necessary. What we do yes. of the exhibit yes. is another thing. Yes, but the, the exhibit is one thing, the yes. relevance is another thing, Precisely. but the weight is another thing. Yes, but if you can assist the commission... Can we make progress, please? My Lord, this, 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 this point is important. Exhibit 55. As the court pleases. My Lord, I thought the commissioner had just agreed. Address, you can address, so ignore it. We will take that note. Well, let's make progress. As my Lord, please. The... Are we consulted volume? Um, Cross-examination insisted that the coup was an Igbo coup in 1966. Due to getting an inroad into northern Nigeria, Mr. Orodi claimed that some selfish politicians who hitherto were darlings at Ibadan found a new El Dorado at Enugu where the milk is flowing freely from the cow. The exchange of visits had to become the order of the day between uh, the Tiv and uh, neighboring eastern Nigerian legislators who spoke Tiv fluently. There was also a heated demand for a separate uh, middle belt. The old wounds were opened by reviving old disputes caused by the East. I don't have to add, uh, put that in uh, an exhibit, but uh, that In fact, is, all they are saying in effect, yes, we yes. are about inroad into the North, yes. is that you, if you represent the North, do not believe in Nigeria unity. If you believe in Nigeria unity, why talk about inroad into the North or inroad into the South or inroad into the West? That wouldn't arise at all in the first instance. You'll be talking about one political community, I find this in. This was so. If that is the case, Nepal has a right to come to East and make an alliance. Uh, uh, Ashan Group has a right to go anywhere and make an alliance. And then Pentis has a right to go to Rivers as it did and make an alliance. 
So you consider that as an attempted alliance in sending arms into Tiv I area. think the use of the word inroad as a negation of Ni speech of Nigerian unity. Yes. And I hope I use that word as an enemy of Nigerian unity. A stop or of Nigerian unity. What? <laughs> yes. Do you accept that you sought to destabilize the North and Nigeria by your incursions with arms into Tiv land during the Tiv disturbances? First, talking about arms, that was a mere speculation. Just as somebody come and say that the NPC put the arms say, into river, I put it to you, do you agree us. that? In any case, the Middle Belt do, was under the authentic do you commander agree, of, Joseph, uh, of, of uh, Joseph Taka of revered memory. Do you agree that the Igbos sought to destabilize with importation of arms, ammunition, and films and propaganda machinery for the purpose of destabilizing that, the North and therefore Nigeria? That for the importation is low grade. It is. It's got a propaganda. Do you accept it or not? You are special. It's got a propaganda. I reject you, it. With contempt. Okay. You. 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 You don't. You. It. Okay. Hmm? Why the provocation? Why the flurry? Therefore. Why the provocation? Why do do you get upstarted? a most uninformed, illiterate fashion <laughs> of history. I'll come back to school. I am putting it to you that the events leading to the January coup of 1966 had been on right from the 1961 which was attained in January 66. Sorry, I didn't follow, I didn't follow what you're saying. The Indigbo started in 1961 to attain what it wanted in 1966. I put it to you that it was an program that was nurtured carefully, deliberately to destabilize the country the murders of the northern officers and northern politicians and opened the Pandora box of illegal action by the military into civilian affairs. I have told you about the constellation of social forces, both in the West and the West, that culminated in this. If you decide to remain blind to the forces of history, I can help you. From, from, from January 1966, the military, the coup of 1966, opened the ponderous box which others became students of in subsequent years. Would you agree? that the coup of 66 was the first event in politicizing the military into the affairs of constitutional democracy and subsequent coups. It was the yes. first, the military had been politicized from the events I've mentioned earlier about the mirroring the divisions it is into the army. But the actual step mm -hmm. that gave expression to this, until I agree with you, you are right there. So you agree that the, uh, January 66 was the beginning of politicization of the military. No, no, my answer the way I put it. No, yes or no? No, I won't say yes or no to a question. No, in this case, it's yes or no. No. Are you prepared to accept yes or no? I'll give you an answer which I think is appropriate. That is, things are either right or wrong. No half measures. Sorry, the answer? Things are either right or wrong. Yes. Did the military first get make their first adventure into democratic constitutional life in January '66 or not? Sorry, come again, please. Did, 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 the, did the military make their first incursion 
into constitutional democracy and violence in January 66 or not? Yes, you're right. I put it to you that the Igbos were the leading forces that led us to what ended Nigeria to what it is today. No, the leading social forces, if you want to personalize it, began from Operation Wait here and from the riots in the Middle Belt. Which, like I put to you, was caused by the Indigo civilians and soldiers. Which I put it to you too was low grade fiction. You can't put it to me. I put it to you that the marginalization that you define is a relative matter for your own definition. Let me give you an example. Was a, rel a relative matter? Was a subjective. Subjective, okay. I put it to you that your consideration of marginalization is a subjective view. It was unsupported not. by facts. No, I quoted Adedeji there to define uh, marginality. Are you aware that in two years ago, oh, we quoted, the Indigo really. made a national advertisement on the papers that the Igbos owned 75% of every property in Abuja? Are you aware of that? In, in when? In 1901? Two years ago, the yes. Indigbo made a national advertisement on all the papers that they owned 75% of all property in Abuja. I read something like that, yes. Who? But it was not published by Ohaneze. Who is the marginalizer or the marginalized in that respect? The you are assuming first that we agree that the facts mentioned there were correct. Well, if you tell me it's not true, then uh, the Ndibo, uh, I, would, I would say they made a statement inconsistent. And in any the case, fact. in any case, a question of marginalization, we are talking about marginalization in the context of the public terrain, in the private sector, sector through your drive, through your hard work, you could have anything you have. Today in the today in the country uh -huh. today in the country today in the country the Ashamalos that is the Shobo, Oshobos dominate textile trade and uh, Ashoka trade the whole of West Africa the whole of Nigeria that was based on their ingenuity and personal drive today the houses dominate cattle rearing trade hide and skin suya it was their own drive and their own we are talking about help to separate private sector from the public sector. So you agree with me that the enabling environment does not make the Indigo marginalized. The environment enables. Please. You agree with me that the Indigo enjoyed an enabling environment which made it possible to fare well. Made the environment. The environment has been enabled for the Indigo to go into their free enterprise and have the full benefit of the free enterprise. I will put it the other way around. In spite of the artificial obstacles in the neighboring environment, the Igbos through their drive were able to do whatever they achieved. What was the disabling environment that enables them to achieve what they have achieved? What was the disabling environment? Let me give just one specific instance. And to avoid personalizing this, Gay, not west, this and that, which I always keep, I try to avoid. No, I, I I'm giving one for the federal government. I keep advising myself that we are no, doing this I give, for this I give for you an example for the federal government. Now okay. I want to remove this from the motive level of tribes and indigenous and all that. Is uh, there, I want to give you an example. I have to give you an example. 
is the enabling environment there for what success the Indigo had been able to achieve? Is it there? The what I'm saying, what I'm saying that if us we were able to achieve what they achieved in spite of obstacles in the enabling environment, I put it notionally, to notionally, enabling environment was supposed to be there, but in practice, the obstacles are not there. I put it to you that, uh, but for the if an Igbo man moves with fast and gets I put it to you. I put it to you that the enabling environment is responsible for the free enterprise, which aspect you do not accept as part of your demarginalization if you felt marginalized. I, I put it I to you. I didn't, follow, I didn't follow what you are putting to me. I put it to you that the gross sum of the, the aggregate benefit to the Indigo has the countervailing situation of demarginalizing others, but it is a free enterprise. I, I put, it to, you, I put uh -huh. it to you that the environment, uh -huh. the benefits of the environment outweighs every other conceivable perception of marginalization that you have. I put it to you that it is you who are the marginalizer and others who accept the forces of the market and constitutionalism and the law. I reject that, Destiny, uh, if you follow up my very clear difference between the private sector and the public sector <laughs> and what's happening in the uh, free market economy. Let me just give you an example of this you're mentioning. You see, you don't want to take this environment has <laughs> enabled you. Why do you avoid the examples I want to give? Because the answer is yes or no. Take your uh, exhibit, the, the summary, the page on fundamental human rights you, that you claim to have been denied. Sorry, what uh, page? Look at the summary. Have you got the summary? The summary. On exhibit three, look at page two. Exhibit what, sir? Exhibit three. Page two. Mm. Mm. So I just said two or four. Page two. Paragraph two, marginalization. Last paragraph. That marginalization, can you read that? Thus, that marginalization thus, as mm. used in this petition refers to systematic attempts to deprive or abridge individuals' right to life, right to means of livelihood, right to human dignity, right to freedom of movement, right to freedom from discrimination, right to acquire and own immovable property anywhere in Nigeria, and other rights enshrined in the Constitution. Which ones were denied? Sorry, sir. Which ones were denied? Because denied or abridged, which ones were denied? Because it's the litany of the entire constitutional provision under Chapter 3. Uh, which ones were denied? Right to life, program said much about that. Right to oh, me. Is it today or before? Is this denial of right to life? Is it today? Well, right. You said thus marginalization. Right also, right also in which he was the scapegoats have become familiar, recurring decimal. I come and know all these things in annual festivals in the country. So I can decide, I can continue to describe it in continuous present tense. When last year, hundreds of northerners were killed in uh, the east, was that not a deprivation of life of others? Well, make your own case to okay. our panel. Okay. 
give or it has been made. Look at the right, the right to life. You have a right to life, there you are. And so have all others. Second, livelihood. Third, to human, hu dignity. human dignity. Yes. Fourth, freedom of movement. Yes. Freedom from discrimination. discrimination. Yes. Right to acquire and own property. Is that last one abridged or denied? Sorry. Is the last one abridged or denied? Uh, both denied in some places, abridged in other places. The right to own property? Yes. I put it to you that you give me exhibit five, please. Give me exhibit five. Oh, okay. Yes. Here it is. Okay. Give me exhibit five. Yes, can you look at that? It's called what? The Nigeria Biafra, can you read it? Can you read it, the back? Nigeria Biafra, read on. Conflict. Uh-huh, yes. An international commission of jurists finds prima facie evidence of genocide. Who made it? What? Who made this? Nigeria Biafra conflict and International Commission of Jurists yes. find prima facie evidence. Who made it? Yeah, the International Commission of Jurists. Where is the signature of the jurists? Well, last night it was pointed out that uh, no what happened, that this report was not complete. Was not complete? Well, yet last, yesterday when they had acquired notice for the first time, they said there are some pages you are missing. Someone was saying yesterday. So it is not for the time being an authentic thing until it's completed. No, it is. It has no maker. The affidavits are unsigned. I put it to you that you contracted, created documents out of a sense, out of perceived false perception of marginalization. The documents are fake. No. Okay, this, this one has. Okay, there are others who are there for us. What? We are what? There to listen. Okay, show me how this can be taken as true. It's International Commission of Jurists. Can't you get a copy? It has no maker. International Commission of Jurists. Yes. We have a copy. Where is the document that was from which this was made? Because it does not show the maker. It's a contraption. No, it's we, fake. We have a copy from which Just like your air raids. For which medical photocopies. Okay, the originals were signed by the makers, the jurists. Do you have a copy that was made and presented to you by the ICJ? We got the copy in fact from uh, one who actually took part and presented us, Justice Smokede. But they uh, who made it uh, show, show me the name of the person who made it or the signatory yeah this one here yes yes of this of this uh, of this uh, that's what i said i'm told that yesterday the family let me i was surprised to share some pages i'm missing that's what i'm going to find out to find out why what happened so it's another half truth like your aircraft attacks no of course you, it is not you present this place with fake documents incomplete 
aircraft things and uh, people who look into the monocle into the future to find future air disasters, marginalizations, fake and, uh, and uh, pretended. I put it to you that your whole document is fake. <laughs> no, it is not true. <laughs> My Lord, I seek to tender no genocide. Exit 53. Uh, give him exit 53 to look at the back. Can you read the back? Can, can you read it? No genocide? No, no genocide. What fin is at, at the bottom? Mm -hmm. fi final report of Observer Team to Nigeria from one, Organization of African Unity, to Britain, Canada, Poland, Sweden. Those are the makers of that document saying that there was no genocide in the civil war of Nigeria, both during the police action to arrest the culprits or during the full-scale war. As such, you open the first page. Uh, so go to page 30. Uh, 29, rather. Uh, read the names at the bottom. Signed. Page 29. The bottom, the names there. Major General W. L. Signed first, there's in brackets, signed. Read oh, signed, yes. Uh -huh. Major General W. A. Wilroy, Canada. Colonel Alphon Orkewiz, Poland, signed. Signed, Major General Arab, Sweden, signed. Brig Brigadier Sir Bernard Ferguson, United Kingdom. Go to page 11. Name the signatories there. Name the signatories on page 11. 11, the road signed Commander Sliman Hoffman, signed Brig Brigadier General Nega Tuhen. So that is how you seek to prove the authenticity of a document and the World Observer team said there was no genocide after thorough investigations and free checks. You have nothing here to show who authenticated, signed or participated, only typed pieces of paper and unsworn affidavits. No, I told that you that. Follows, I put it to you that that follows the entire fabrication of these documents which you want the world to believe are facts. If I told you that you yourself, yesterday it was led to believe that the last pages you are missing, when I get in, you will find out why. Because I know the original book we left in the uh, Paris of Kibo's library, which I was trying to find out before he died. I remember that very, very clearly. Secondly, I don't know what you mean by saying thorough observation of, 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 of uh, observer team. Because in Biafra, we never saw anybody from Observer Team. I put it to you that these documents are imaginary and concocted 
and made without any truth in them whatsoever, either before the war, during the war, or after the war, and that the Indigo have nothing in their hands to support their allegations. I reject that as a mere re-echo of what our council From did yesterday. I put it to you that January 66, July 66, the Biafra civil war, its aftermath, and how you fare, you have created a scenario that is false with no foundation whatsoever. And on that case, I urge the tribunal to discount your entire presentation. How long will your own last? Because we are closing at four. Will your own be more than four? If that is yes, we give you a fresh date. So you come fresh and you have our four hours. No, my Lord, I don't think I will ask this witness up to will 15 it? questions. 10 minutes will be all right for you? Yes. 10 minutes? No, my Lord, 10 minutes will not be okay. Give me how many minutes? My Lord, uh, I think uh, if I can have uh, between 20 and 25 minutes, I will be through with so you. So after 25 minutes, I stop? You will stop me. All right. No problem. Uh, comrade Uche Chuku Marije, uh, please open uh, your memo at page 15. I don't know. Exhibit 1. Turn to paragraph 3. That exhibit. Exhibit one. The petition. The page fifteen, you say. Page fifteen. Okay. Yes, please. Yes. Paragraph three. You mentioned the first middle birds. Am I right? Yes. Uh, do you have? an in-depth knowledge of what the middle bed was and what it is in present today, uh, present day Nigeria, by, in terms of states. Uh, fairly general, I won't use the word in-depth. I didn't get you. I would say general like anybody else, I won't use in-depth. Can you give a brief description of the middle bed because we have put it there? Then or as it is now? As in today's configuration of which state, which state, which state, to the best of your knowledge? Well, to the best of my knowledge today, you are talking about Benue, you are talking about Plateau, uh, uh, you are talking about Taraba, you are talking about uh, um, Kogi, you are talking about. Uh, yeah, but louder, please. No, Kogi is louder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, today's uh, middle belt. Yes. You are talking about uh, like Benue. You are talking about uh, Plateau. Yes. You are talking about uh, Taraba. You are talking about um, Kogi. You are talking about. Uh, that's the common one thing I can remember often. All right. I don't want to tell lies on this. But there's a possibility that there, there's a possibility that there's an additional area. There, there are at least two more. There are Thank more. Thank you very there much. Should be at least six states. Uh, you relied on blood on the Niger, written by E. Okocha, on that in the same page 15. Yes, please. Now. Blood on the Niger, did you find out whether it is a first hand uh, authority or it is based on a collation of other authorities? 
No, it, uh, our fundraiser was based on extensive research. Extensive research. And extensive research, of course, will imply observations, verbal interviews, relying on other authorities, and so on and so forth. In other words, there was no direct evidence as far as the blood on the Niger is concerned to show that the Edomas and the Thieves massacred the Igbos when they no, were no, running no, around. No, 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 no. Uh, we're not talking about his, uh, his blood of Niger was not on a domas and distance. They were in the same paragraph. It started within the second wave. That's different. Blood of Niger was talking about the Saba massacre and the middle belt. Listen. No, this is not a part of, the, of what he was saying. Well, it's not part of what he was saying. No, so they were in the same paragraph. Not, they're, not talking, they're not talking about middle belt. Okay. Yes. Sorry, we're not talking about middle belt. So uh, the first two uh, lines. Of that paragraph, said many Igbos who managed to escape from the far north were massacred yes. in thousands by Edomas and thieves. Yes, as they transited through the Middle Belt. Yeah, that's the only one that applied to this. For not, in order for the blood of Niger. Okay, you are not quoting from the blood of no, Niger. No, no, please, no. Now, how do you substantiate? Is it because from personal knowledge? No, from extensive interviews done by the police, by civil defence. By, uh, by intelligence, from those coming, they're coming back in millions. But uh, you were not. And that's what led to uh, program one, two, three, four, volumes, or to volume six. You were not part of the interviewing team. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. In other words, this is hearsay. No, it could be hearsay. So authentic authenticated uh, history. So. Uh, Turn to page 45 of exhibit 1. 45. You have listed some riots from 1980 to 1992, etc., etc. What yes, was the nature of these riots? Religious, ethnic, political? Or what? Varied. Those that are deeply religious are described as religious. But everything centered on religion. Uh, not necessarily maybe communal conflict or one or the other. Emphasis was really on the act of riot itself. Now, can you describe these riots? We want to know this is a fact finding commission. Were they religious? Were they tribal? Or were they political? I was telling you that you can't categorize all as, uh, listen, those that we know for sure are definitely religious, we try to describe as religious. Okay. The others may not even In other words, uh, some of them there were religious. Yes, some were religious, some were not. If they were religious, who started them? Well, in most of these things, as we hinted, the Disappointment was that many of them, there were no official investigations. Our main concern was the number, the magnitude of injury inflicted on Igbo lives and property. That's our main concern in this. That uh, always was Cape Goods, always. Okay. When you talk of religious, religious riots, are you talking which religions are you mentioning? in terms of these riots? Which religions? Is it Bundi, uh, Bodhi, Christianity, Islam, or whatever? The reality of Nigeria are three main religions, Islam, Christianity, and animist. So basically, there were riots concerning Islam. It could Islam, vote for any of the two, or whatever. Islam and Christianity. Most of basically, the riots concerning Islam and Christianity. More or less, yes. If, if, if riots were the cause there, if religion was the cause in each, any of the prayers. Yeah. So if they were re religious, it means not only indigo would be affected, other people were also affected, especially from the middle belt. Yes, you're right. Uh, do in you fact, remember that on the 3rd of May, 2001, why this Honorable Commission was sitting at Inugu, two witnesses, Gideon, a maker, and one COB, 
and Weze Nzerebe testified on behalf of Ohanes Ndiwo. Could you remember? I couldn't remember. I didn't, I didn't see it throughout. All right. Because at the middle of it, after my testimony, I okay, left, let but me, I was bereaved. Let me you know, put you through so throughout. that yes. maybe you can remember. These two people told the story that before the war, they had property somewhere in the Middle West. But after the war, they went back and reclaimed their property. Mm. Do you remember that? Yes. And do you have evidence elsewhere that property that Ibos left just before or during the Civil War in the Middle Belt was tempered with when they came back to reclaim? No, we just have evidence of underpayment, not uh, tempered with. Yes. Thank you. But generally, they came back to claim back their property. Yes. If you are called upon to fight on behalf of the federal government, will you adhere to the call? Federal government? Yes. To fight on their behalf? On their behalf against an enemy. Against an enemy? Yes. External or internal? <laughs> an enemy, generally. Huh? Against an enemy. If enemy of Nigeria, yes, I will. I mean, without betting our lead, I will. You will agree with me that most of the people that fought during the Civil War were from the Middle Belt, on yes. the side of the federal government. Yes. And they were merely responding to a, a national call. They didn't have any particular interest or inflicting injury on the Igbos. Yes. Now, you have graphically described the Middle Belt area to the best of your knowledge. Would I also be correct to say that the agitations for a Middle Belt region started in the late 1930s, up to the time, in fact, up to today? Will I be correct? To the I best of your knowledge. I don't know details of history, but based on my knowledge, yes. You are aware that before independence, there were struggles for the realization of a Middle Bay region, and that the late J. A. Stacker even went to the London Constitutional Conference for this. Yes. So, from time immemorial, let us put it that way, the Middle Bay has been seeking a separate identity from Arewa, to the best of your knowledge? To the best of my knowledge, yes. So it is very wrong to input the crimes, so to speak, of Arewa on the Middle Belt, as adumbrated in your petition. Arewa. Arewa, as the name implies, defines the north, and Middle Belt is a part of geographically a part of the north. No, let me understand. Let me hear you. Let me hear you very well. You so ask me about whether it's wrongness or rightness of imputing the blame of Arewa on the Middle Belt. That's what you asked me. Yes. I told you that my understanding about Arewa is the whole north. A middle belt is a part of the whole north. Yes. But the fact that there were struggles by a certain section you have defined as the middle belt suggests that the middle belt did not agree with all that Arewa was doing at that time. Am I right? Yes. So if the Middle Belt were so fair-minded to return your property, it is not possible to suggest 
that they massacred Igbos when Igbos were going back, running away from persecution. It is possible we we'll give concrete examples given by the men, those who have their wound to show. They came with one who's almost a giant, six feet three, whose head was cut off in Makode, and the whole cost was brought back there. Now, you... And we are used to what here, we're led, and I mean we're led. Those who escaped are those who came to tell the story. Take a look at uh, page 15 once again. That page 15 sounds very important to the middle bird. Paragraph 2. You, the first and second uh, lines. Yes, I mentioned one judge. You mentioned one poor eye, Okwara. Yes. The deposition to the tribunal. According to you, he is an eyewitness. Did he also address you personally? This uh, poor Okwara on his experiences has reduced there. No, this is a part of the, wit a part of the uh, evidence he gave before uh, on UK Commission. It's no, an old, it's an old man, sorry, he's an old man now. Yes. And we got him and he confirmed the same story. And uh, he did he not testify, he has not so far what, testified. What he was the story as he gave it then, yes. He has not so far testified before this commission. This commission? Uh, yes. I thought I don't know. You don't know? No. So I am putting it to you that the Middle Belt region, as has been agitated for, is also complaining of marginalization and therefore could not have been an instrument of marginalization against the Igbos. The marginalized can be marginalizing other others too. Don't forget that. In fact, the greatest form of cruelty is the oppressed to the oppressed if you know the, therapy, the anatomy of oppression. So the fact that they are marginalized, as you say, doesn't mean that they could marginalize Igbos. But here, yeah, we're not even complaining about middle belt as marginalizing us. Or anybody in that particular, we're talking about the system, I can emphasize it. So it is the same system that I am putting it to you that has marginalized the middle belt debt. Uh, that is your own case. Put your case to put a commission. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord, uh, that is all for the witness. Now, uh, how many minutes will you take? My Lord, uh, ten minutes will be okay by me. Because we must rise by four. Ten minutes will be okay by me, my Lord. All right, go. My Lord, uh, at the bar here, we, the younger members of the bar, we are praying that when we grow old, we, God should grant us the grace of the patience of this commission. <laughs> My Lord, uh, I want to take the witness through exhibits one and three which were both documents of uh, Ohanese Ndibu. Comrade, sir. Reading through exhibits one and three, both of which you were a signatory, I take it that you believe in its entirety everything contained in those exhibits. Yes, my lord. You also believe in those exhibits as concerning what it says pertaining to the River State Government? Yes, sir. Yes. Specifically, you are grouse against the River State Government involve three issues. Namely, one, the abandoned property. Two, an alleged refugee camp of Indibus being maintained by the River State Government. And three, 
boundary dispute between River State and some states of Indibo. These were the thrust of the issues you raised in both exhibits one and three. I want you to be audible enough for the commission. Oh, sorry. Yes. Fine. Now, let's take them seriatim, starting with the abandoned property, because I have very little time. Are you aware that the abandoned property policy of the River Tate government, a product of the exigency of the Civil War, was actually designed to preserve and protect the properties for eventual return to the approving owners? Uh, before I answer that question, please, you mentioned about grounds against river states. I thought our we are ground, past, our I thought grounds we are, in this sense are against the federal government and against the system. No, I mean, as, I go to your question now. As tangentially uh, touching on river state yes, within the yes, petition, yes. Yes. Uh, you said that uh, the properties we are preserved to be returned to their owners, right? They are event for the approving owners, eventual return to the approving owners. Are you aware that that was the policy of the university government? I'm not aware because in actual fact, that was not what was done. Fine. You are not aware of such a policy. Yes. Are you aware that that Let's policy... Let's put it in focus. States don't make decrees. My Lord, they make my, edicts. My Lord, I, I have not talked about it. it. So if there's a policy, it should be a policy of federal government, my Lord, not state government. My Lord, I have not talked about any decree. And then I know where I'm leading the witness to. Yes. We, we never pretended to have the power to promulgate a decree. Are you aware, comrade, that that policy was backed up by a law of the River State government, an edict? Are you aware? Yes, an obnoxious bad law. <laughs> I didn't ask you about the character of the law. It's a a bad question. law is as good as no law, that's what I'm trying to say. Are you aware that law is the abandoned property Custody and Management Edict Number no. Eight of 1969. That to for lawyers. I don't know. No, 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 no. Is that the name of that law? I don't want to fall into or emulate the bad example of tendering law through you. I know <laughs> what you use to make of laws. Are you on a, do you understand my question? Are you aware of yes, any I'm law? Aware of that bad law. That I said. No, no, no. Let's forget about what the law is. The commission will decide on that. That will be the work of the commission. Because that thought it pinches us. No, 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 no. No way they pitch. I am not asking you about the nature of that law. Whether a law is bad or good, leave it to the commission. But are you aware that there was such a law known as the Abandoned Property Custody yes. and Management Edict Number no. yes. 8 of 1969? Yes, sir. Fine. Are you aware that from the provisions of that law, All owners of abandoned properties, upon their return, such properties would be returned to them if they validly prove title to such properties. Do you know that that was the content of that law? The content, if they were contents of law, they are not implemented. No, do you know? We'll go to, let's I will, I will the, know because I know all the people who came to explain their, mm -hmm. this, most of them lost their lives no. in the process. Do you know that this is the policy which this law embodied? The landlords are inter interested in policy, they're interested in actual fact, what's happening on the field. Let's get to somewhere. Are you aware that that policy was actually entrenched into that law, because that is what we are going to show to the commission eventually. Are you aware that there is such a principle, at least, in this law, even if it was not implemented, according to you? Yes. Very good. Are you aware that under that law, that if a claimant proves validly his title to a particular property, the property was returned to him by means of an instrument issued under the hand of the governor. 
So the Lord said, good. Are you aware, comrade, that eventually the federal government in trying to give protective legal backing to this policy, which was not unique to River State, also put in place a law at the federal level called the Abandoned Properties Act? Yes, a rubber law. You leave that to the commission, comrade. Are you aware that under that Abandoned Properties Act, every step, every action taken by any state government concerning abandoned property matters Sorry, cannot be brought before any other council. Council, council. Yes. Which one came first in point of time? Was it the edict or the decree? My Lord, I, I, we want to know, follow the sequence. Yes, You're I talking about he had earlier referred him to an edict. My Lord, I, 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 my, I'm not in doubt about my last question. The edict came first, and I have followed that sequence. Uh -huh. And then the decree came later. Yes, my Lord. I hope there is no other question for my Lord. Huh? I thought there's some more question for my Lord for no, me. No, I want I see. clarification. Comrade. Yes, sir. Finally, on this mm. aspect of it, are you aware that the federal government, by means of the Abandoned Properties Act, barred, that is, foreclosed any inquiry of any nature in any court concerning issues of abandoned property, including questions involving human rights resulting from those transactions? Are you aware? Yes, but not including human rights. Comrade. Yes, sir. You talk about, at pages 34 to 35 of your petition, you talk about boundary dispute between some territory of Ndigbo with River State. And you call into question before this commission some form of demarcation. Are you aware? that in 1983, the Supreme Court of Nigeria did determine effectively and effectually boundary dispute between River State and areas of Ndigo territory that were in issue. Are you aware of such a Supreme Can I Court? I the two adverbs, effectively and what? Are you aware? No, I have to okay. consent. There's okay. two, ad two adverbs, effectively, effectively and Effectively and effectually. That is that matter has been closed. Are you aware of it? I'm saying effectively here, not effectually, not closed. I, I see. Are you also aware that in nineteen eighty seven the Supreme Court again, taken from the axis of the Indoni Egbema area, also made a categorical judicial pronouncement in a decision between River State and Ndigo on this issue of boundary? Yes. On the third issue of your refugee camp, comrade. Yes, sir. You know that the whole Nigerians are watching these proceedings. Do you want them to believe? Because as we are carrying on, we are being beamed for the whole world to see. You want this honorable commission and Nigerians to believe that there is a refugee camp in River State maintained by River State government of Indigos? Yes, I wrote inquiry. You want this commission, if you so minded, to embark on a visit to the locus inquo to believe that they could identify such a refugee camp in River State in the year 2001 of Indibos? They will. Yes. Do you know who instituted this so called refugee camp? Who put it in place? Who instituted them? Do you know the origin? Who put it in place? How did it come about? The state government at that time. Which state government specifically? Can you? Which particular regime? Can you be specific? I don't know what particular regime, but at that time. Have you brought this to the attention of the River State government at any point? Yes, at that time, yes. How about now? Through Mbakwe and others. Now, that have you brought Can it? I help you? Witnesses came. 
and give evidence about this camp. That is why we have called it. He is not a witness. He doesn't he didn't go there. Witnesses living there came and gave evidence yes. and said they reported to the uh, reverse government, yes. asking him is neither here nor there. My Lord, this that is hold it. I want to also pursue it because we should have gone to see the camps ourselves. It's, so if you let us know the names of the witnesses, so you can cross check. My Lord, that's what I'm saying. That is all the more reason why we, I have a duty. We to want to know the him. facts, but not from this witness. From those witnesses, but here uh, is please, can you give us the names of those witnesses so that you can also cross check? Very well, my lord. Uh -huh. Yes, so you can also cross check. You're asking him is he here, neither here nor there. My lord, this is the author of Exhibit Three. So no, that is not Exhibit Three. Exhibit three. The, the whole evidence to be presented. It is and from witnesses came one by one. So give him the details. My lord, we are very grateful, but these facts are contained in the petitions of which this witness is a maker. I, I think this point is not a point that we can uh, gross over or be established by merely asking him or even those who gave evidence. Very well. That is a matter I think that has to be resolved by visit, visit. Locos Inco. And I have said that much yes, in, I, my, in my I, question. I agree with you. Yes. So they I may have come to say, yes, there were refugees, but is that not enough? Yes. In my view. That is, is a matter that only a physical visit. Yes, because the, to the government does not can, maintain can such a camp. That is why is we are bold yes. for the whole Nigerian to hear us that we are prepared that should be a visit to the site. Before you con uh, conclude, yes, can we arrange a date to visit this place with the River State government, the commission, possibly the witnesses? So we know what is really on the ground, whether the witnesses are lying or whether they're telling the truth. My Lord, we would like to be guided so by the commission. Address is not, we have to go there. <laughs> so that during our report, yes. we say we went there. Yes, Either we saw or we did not see. Yes. Yes. So Lord, if, if, if we will decide we Before thought we the close, the commission yes. would give us indication. We, we send letters to the parties. Okay. We send letters to you. Send letters to the petitioners. Yes. But All uh, right then. For the Just guide. like we are going to Egypt, Locus, yes, Kaduna State. Yes. So we try and arrange to go to this alleged. Yes. Unquote, Very well, my lord. Uh, what do you call it? Refugee camp. Refugee camp. Yes, my lord. My lord, for the commission's guide. We will not be disposed in August because August is closed because of the bar conference. We are all involved. I am on the neck of MBA. So any date in September will be okay by us, my lord. We are grateful, my lord. Yes. Yes. My lord, uh, in line with my promise to be very brief and uh, not to emulate the, my earlier colleagues, I have finished with this witness. <laughs> Please make a note of it. Make a note of it. When you decide on a date to visit the so called camp, inform the River State government, inform the petitioners. So, like, uh, where to meet and proceed. Thank you. Well, you can indicate it. It's a law. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Are you, uh, you haven't finished? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Just on a very brief note and conciliatory, conciliatory note, too. All right. Um, comrade Chukumerije, you are a member of the PR. Um, PRP, yes. Did you belong to the PRP? Yes, I held up for a general secretary. You are what? Could you speak more loudly? I'm sorry, please. Yes, I belong to the PRP, but I ended up as the general secretary. PRP is People's Redemption Party for the records. Yes. Now, and you are the secretary general. I began as public secretary for the general, general secretary general. Now, that is the point I will use on the concluding point. But 
I would like to take you to the evidence of bullying. I hope I'm correcting it, uh, pronouncing it correctly. Of Wednesday, the 25th April, at uh, page 84. Page 84. My, my Lord, yeah. Th this is this is the verbatim report, and I would oh, save I the time of the commission just to refer to it because it's on the records. In his evidence, he was quoting from the book written by Ademo Ega. And in it, he gave an account that is of relevance to which I would like you to confirm or deny. That was of the time I wanted to join the army. Yes, I will come to it. I, I will just direct you to it. Okay, I don't want to save time, if that's what you want to ask. Now, he referred to an incident. Did you attempt to join the Nigerian army? Not only I attempted, you I, attempted to I passed the exam with flying colors. Not just I attempted. You passed the exam with flying colors? Yes, and I was the first person to be declared a wool when I refused to join. But his account, comrade, is that you are not selected. No, he didn't say so. Well, I, I, I will refer to what he said. No, he didn't the, say so. And these are not my words. Yes. Well, I, I read what I have. Maybe yes. the records got it wrongly. So I had undergone a six month military training preparatory to their father, father training pro overseas. In this instance, two of us came from outside, namely Uche Chukumerije and myself. Then he said, now do you know Uche? He said, I cannot afford not to know him. The chairman said, go on. And then he further continued. I don't know whether I should read all of it in view of the time. OK. Uche Chukumerije and myself, it was actually the selection board meeting that brought us together for the first time. And we took, yes, well, I said so that he was quoting from Ademo Ega. We took to each other at once as if we had grown up together. When we are brought together with those cadets in the process of being tested, we observed some of them. Sorry, that is some of them that who were northerners who were more carefree and more confident of sailing through those from than those from the south. Sorry, those from the south were afflicted by fear of failing that they wore the look of anxiety and bewilderment. In the course of our discussion, the cadets made it clear to us that less than half of their grown-up, their own group would be selected, and Northerners were already billed to be 50% of the total number to be selected. However, they already knew the eight Northerners to be selected, and they knew that at least some of, none of those Northerners would, would, ever, would never have made it but for the quota system. This explains why they were bewildered after we were all Nigerians, and there should be no cause for discrimination of any kind. It was rather surprising that the total number allowed to pass through was small since at that time. This Nigerianization of officers Mr. Chairman, was a popular expectation. L let me skip it, unless, of course, if the commission wants us to read all of it. Now, I will go to the point where he said, the second incident, still referring to the book, was an account that you, Boulier, and a demo had an ex uh, exchange, three of you. 
Did you have any such exchange? You, Ademoega, and Bule. Well, I'm, I'm reading from the, uh, sorry, failed the exam. Okay. Well, if that boy you mentioned, I wanted to read that portion. I said I failed the exam. Was I very categorical about that? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I will take the correction that he may have accepted, but he abandoned. I take the correction, Mr. Chairman. But no, it's, it's, not, it's not my. It's the what is in the book. Why we struck is there? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh -huh. Then let me go to the next point I, I wanted to make. Did you have any consultation, the three of you? Consultation. You, yes, you, Bulie, and Ademoega. Yes or no? No, I th you're trying to read something about say, the second meeting or something like that you're trying to say there. I wanted you to tell this commission whether you had any consultation between you, Ademoega, and Bulie. I don't know what you mean by consultation. Wole did you ever discuss, did you ever discuss the, Ni the Nigerian military? What? The situation in Nigeria before the coup? Well, in the Marxist days in those days, I discussed the situation with Nigeria with everybody. So, would it and be I discuss it very often with uh, with uh, Wale. As he must have pointed out to you in that book, that one reason why I didn't join the army, because I was too radical for the army. Would it be correct that if would I be correct to say you are consulted by them? Of course, it is not. That's, to abs the army? that's absurd. I didn't know anything about this. Well, this is what he has said. Just as you couldn't quote where he said well, I failed now, instead well, where I was a consultant. Quote it. Let me see it now. This one I will. Uh, this one I will. Well, this is, this is what is said in the book, please. This is what is said in the book. This is what, you, what was said by a demo guy in the book. Demo guy, or by me? Because yes. you said what I said. Now you said a demo I don't know which one. No, I asked you whether you were consulted. Okay, you go said on, you go are on, not. Yes. You said you are not. I think that's absurd. So I said, oh, I said you said that, it yes. was absurd. Yes. Now this is what Bullier said in his testimony. Imagine, sir, we later, we later spoke to page 86. We later spoke to other officers, including Captain Okechime, who encouraged us 
to come into the army. Later on, when I was alone with Uche, he expressed a demo eager saying this. He, Uche, expressed some misgivings about Efejuna being already in the army. He explained that during a planned agitation in the days at University of Ibadan, Efejuna deserted their group in the moment of action. He was therefore apprehensive that Efejuna might do the same again in the event of a planned military action, but he's already in the army. I replied, Ademoiga said, and if such a behavior should show again, it would have been taken care of. Uche seemed to have agreed with me with some reservations. He kept quiet. Both of us were accepted by the board. That is where the missing point I was looking for. Both of us, I guess, Ademoega and Bullier were accepted by the board, but Uche did not turn up in the enlistment in the army. His place was remained. So is that, is that failure? Well, my question to you is, did this account take place? Yes, it did. Oh, it, it took place? Yes. Would you therefore say that in the build-up to the coup of 1966, you were a consultant to the but majors who were... No, not a consultant. I have many years before then. As an undergraduate, in the, in the, in the, in the FFS period of Marxist thoughts. This was under, after your thinking, graduation. I was thinking very, very loudly about all these things. Very this was and after your graduation? Yes, sir. That I've, just, I've just graduated by waiting for my results. So they consulted you? No, because we are discussing together. I don't need to consult me. They are older than me. I mean, I, but they were older than me. Well, consult me about what? And, the, and you, discussed, from London. you discussed in connection with what was happening in Nigeria. We discussed everything happening in Nigeria. And they would just group any group. Well, for the, purpose days, of, for, the very open society. For, for the purpose of this commission, only what concerns the change of government that finally Bullye, by his own testimony, and if Junior participated in. Sorry. In we are discussing your consultation, your discussions. Not necessarily your advice. In connection with what was later to become the coup of 1966, in which Boulier, by his own testimony, and Efejuna participated in. Was such a, was any such discussions? You asked me, question, you asked me about the question, and I told you yes, there were, there were discussions. There were not would, you, would you consider like yourself that. therefore a conspirator in the 1966 what? coup? What? Would you consider yourself, even if distantly, a conspirator in the 1966 coup? No, I will not, although I wish I would have had, but I'm not, I'm not. You wish you had participated? Yes, I would, if it had made it more revolutionary. It would have made it more revolutionary. Yes. If I had a, if, if, if I had a clear ideological orientation, maybe all this assassination would not have taken place, because I am not something more important. What would, have, what would have made it more revolutionary? What? What would have made it more revolutionary? First and foremost, Nuclear assassinations are not a part of a revolution. They aren't even necessary in the first instance. Secondly, you have to get out a clear cult ideological roadmap you want to take the country to. It's not just enough to say that this will this, this will this, this will this, that, and all that. Is your version of revolution that of China or that of Russia where killings took place of leaders? I refuse to be diverted from uh, focus. You have to answer my question. question because Russian and Chinese are revolutions in history in which leadership were eliminated. Would that have been in your contemplation, in your own idea of revolution? These are not the only revolutionary decisions. Well, tell me a revolution Cuba that, is well, is it the Cuban? Well, a revolution, I just mentioned a revolution. When because every revolution has tell me, Tell me what revolution where no leadership was not eliminated. Base, I don't need to base it on any local, any foreign model. Uh -huh. The dynamics of a situation works out its own local variety. Oh, okay, well, I, I think I might seek the indulgence of this commission for us to tell you your local variety. 
that will not involve killing when we know from you history can't even tell me because it's not made by revolution. Please, you are a bourgeois to the core. Please, not by revolution. Ask my, answer my question. What question. would have been your version that would not involve the killing and elimination of leaders? The version would be a local variety of a revolution. Well, I'm afraid the local variety which involved Ifejuna and Bulle involved the assassination and selective killing of certain leaders from a different part of the country. That is their own local variety. And was not in probably you would not have behaved differently with them. Answer my question. Would you have behaved differently if you were among the fifth and you become the sixth? That is, that, that, I, don't, I don't know what, what to use to describe it. I'm not just answering your question. Well, you can choose any word and just answer me. I can just choose any word. Choose any word. Geologically yes. illiterate <laughs> institution. Well, what is, your, what is your definition of an illiterate? What is your definition of an illiterate? Mr. Chairman, I will conclude on the point I started. You are the Publicity Secretary, or is it Secretary General of the PRP? Secretary General of P Publicity Secretary of PRP. Excuse me, I'm asking you a question. I told you I was once Publicity Secretary, later the General Secretary. I told you once. That I was originally a publicity secretary and later became general secretary. Of the PRP? Yes, please. Malam Aminikan was what? Then? You mean politically, ideologically, or what? Malam Aminikan was what in PRP then? He was our president he and was our, our leader. He was, your, he was your leader. Would you say that the altercation? the disputations and the disagreements that have taken place all this morning and yesterday and throughout the sitting of this commission are the sort of altercations, disputations that you and Mala Aminu Khan would go through on a matter that you disagree. On a matter? On a matter that you disagree over. What were my altercations? Please, can you be more explicit? Well, I used three words, disputations. Or this or that, I know what disputations. You okay, let me... What do, you, do you mean the tone of the disputations, or what do you mean by... Okay, you... There is a submission you made in Inugu. Some of council took you on that. And obviously, at the end of the day, there wasn't an agreement between you and them. There was or there wasn't? There was no agreement between you and council who took you up okay, on a number okay. of issues. Okay, yes. That's what I mean by disputations. Would it be... No, with regard to Malam Aminu Kano, first there was so much a meeting of the minds We tended to agree on so many issues. And when there was any disagreement on issues, you will allow all to explain their, express their opinions. And somebody who, is normally slave, who was normally slave to logic, if he was convinced that this line of argument was the best, he would say, this was the line we are taking. But the, all the box stopped at his table. He would take the last decision. But there will be a reason debate between you and all the others who are at a meeting with him. Yes, very vigorous too. How would you help this commission in this matter where even if all that has gone through has not been maybe in your estimation reasoned debate, how would you recommend to this commission to find something that will to fight? Fi some way that will lead to reconciliation over a matter that there is disagreement back and forth between contending parties and they're looking for facts and suggestions. I will refer to, I will, if, uh, since you talk in the context of Aminu Kano, then I give the Aminu Kano formula, namely 
Le superior logic win. Uh, can you? I didn't hear you, please. Since you ask this question, I won't I know why you are referring to Amin Ukano. Since you refer to Amin Ukano, and Amin Ukano is was noted as one of the most sensitive consciences in this nation, since you refer to him, I would say that I will recommend to the commission to apply Amin Ukano formula, namely, let superior logic win and let social equity be enthroned. On that case, I close my examination, Mr. Chairman. Do I regard it that all cross examination is over? Sorry. Oh, I, I just want to make a comment. <laughs> uh, at the beginning, yesterday, the Arewa community wanted to. Uh, at the uh, yesterday, the Arewa community wanted to. Uh, enter their, distance, their response, tender it through the witness, and uh, there was serious objection. They claimed that there were questions they wanted to ask the witness. Throughout the cross-examination today, not one single question was taken out of that response. And there were imputations. Well, cross-examining a witness. Oh, no. this is a speech. No, I'm just making an observation uh, uh, concerning what happened this morning. If we have no cross-examination for him, then he can go. Then he can make your observation. He can go. No cross-examination. No cross you are discharged. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, uh, re-examination. Oh. We have to adjourn for re-examination. No, no, what we wanted to say is, if you want to answer the question, go there, we'll ask you. <laughs> no. no. Uh, Re-examination cannot be today. Uh, what is the observation? What? My observation. I'm worried about what happened this morning. Huh? I, I'm worried about what happened this morning. Like the what? invitations made by the Arua community, the, uh, the councils to the Arua community.